Hey guys, it's Levi Gates here with Detox, and with me again, back in the shop here, Mr. Ivan LaCroix of Optimum Polymer Technologies. Welcome, my brother. Thank you. And Dan Williams of Optimum Polymer Technologies. Welcome, my friend. Thank you. Appreciate it. This is Dan's first time up in Boise. We're very excited to have him. And of course, Ivan's an old friend here there on go. the detox set. So every time uh, I come, the set gets better. It gets different. We change it up every yeah. time. It's awesome. So today we're going to talk about professionalism uh, in your detailing business and how to present yourself as a business owner, as a business representative in the know, industry, industry in itself. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of detailers that we see, we talk to, that frankly are not professional. Uh, they may have really great results as far as what they're detailing, what they're doing, you know, the- They've the, got a great skill level. The skill level is excellent. When it comes to dealing with customers, when it comes to presenting themselves, when it comes to presenting their business, and when it comes to representing the industry, they really let themselves down. Yeah. You know, it's not letting anybody else down, they're letting themselves down. And it shows up in their profit margins, it shows up in their customer base, it shows up in a lot of different things. Yeah. And it's a lot of simple things. And, it's all common sense. It's all stuff we already know. We've been taught this since kindergarten. It's just we need to apply it. Yeah. Well, for instance, Dan, what did you do in your when you were a detailer and you were a mobile detailer? You, you, you know, didn't have a shop. One of, probably one of the most important things is you don't want to be going to work under the influence of any drugs or alcohol. That's and a big one. That sounds like pretty simple, however. You'd be amazed. Yeah. You would be surprised. You would be surprised. Um, so that's really important. Um, how you present yourself. I mean, even who I sold my business to is a, a nice looking fella and he, he seems to be able to carry the same image forward. So professional, right. well spoken. Well, I'm, you know. I'm not proud to say, but I used to smoke cigarettes. And uh, the one thing I always tried to do was make sure I didn't have a cigarette in my mouth when a customer walked up and I was talking to them where they pulled up to ask for a quote. I didn't want to be the dude with the cigarette in there looking over their car or going out to look at their car and lighting up a cigarette yeah. and standing there smoking, flicking my ash on their car while I'm trying to give them a quote. Like that was one thing that I was very proud of myself right. that I did not do. And But there are a lot of guys that do. Oh, a lot of guys that do. And you know, to Dan's point, uh, his mobile unit had nice mags on it. It was clean, it was professional had his company logo, company name, and phone number on it. Mm -hmm. And people, a lot of people I hear say, oh, I don't want my name on it, I don't want people contacting me. Hello? <laughs> it's your <laughs> advertisement. Well, or you're yeah. an OptiCode installer and you don't want to put OptiCode on the side of it. Yeah, uh, my little car, I've still got my authorized OptiCode installer sticker. I have the, had the shop logo and the rag company logo all on the side window just for fun, just cause. Yeah, exactly. You know, and then Matt Ward, who took over my shop, actually got OptiCote on his license, license plate. Yeah, that's So it says OPTCOAT, yeah. so. So, yeah. And you know, my, uh, my daily driver, the Mustang, it looks like a, a Boss 302 stripe, but there's actually the OptiCoat logo I've seen where it that, says yeah. Boss 302. So mm -hmm. little things like that, but it's presenting yourself, how you dress as well. There's a, a saying in French, on fait pas des affaires en uh, short. You don't do business in shorts. Oh. You know, wear slacks, wear jeans. I know in the southern climate it's more acceptable, but you don't look professional when you're wearing shorts. To, to that point, Abe Carranza shows up. We had a, a detailing clinic a while back in San Diego. Yeah. He shows up in dress shoes, slacks, nice shirt. Exactly. I, I was like, oh, pretty nice. Right, yeah. This guy's all right. Yeah. On his shirt, had his company logo on it. So little things like that. Always have a business card on you. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big one. And, <laughs> and cards in your car, yeah. cards in your bag, cards in your wallet. I know when I went down to Memphis to visit you guys, I, I totally spaced business <laughs> cards on me. And I was like, I had them in my bag. And I remember I pulled them out because I was cleaning my bag out. And I put everything back except for my little sandwich bag I had and business yeah. cards. And, so. you, and you truly, you never know. Yeah. I was on the airplane yesterday and the, I made a couple connections to the two guys who were sitting next to me that we'll see how they pan out but you never thank know goodness I had business cards right. in my pocket yeah. yeah no and you know there's a lot of little things as well joining the IDA yeah you know the IDA is all about professionalism it's all about elevating our industry to a new level it's not necessarily about who's the best polisher right who can you know apply the, the shiniest coating whatever it's 
who is the best business person? Yep. Who represents the industry the best? And you can get, as you take the certifications and the skills validation and all that, you receive patches and you can patch your work shirts. You can, you get access to the screen printing logos. So you can right. actually just have them screen printed if you want. Um, and then you can have those. So it's just another level of certification for your business so that you can you just promote this better yeah and, uh, and image so to speak people they think that this detailing is not a real business like maybe some of the people that you even end up working for i remember when i first started to go into like international car wash association in florida and uh, mm -hmm. for mobile tech and sema i would say yeah i'm going to a convention for detailing and they'd be like oh okay, okay buddy <laughs> yeah. sure thing because i'm gonna stand around and watch each other wash cars and spray each other with a hose yeah, like and i'd be like it's a multi-million <laughs> yeah. dollar more than that yeah. industry i mean it's huge and everybody has a car and you got to get these cars clean and well, and it grows and it, and it grows every year and it changes every year and you know before it was you know it's just you were a guy that washed cars and now there are guys that are artists yeah and artists and craftsmen since, since the introduction of coatings as well detailing has changed as an industry as yeah. a whole uh, we've gone from doing 100 to 150 dollar wax jobs to doing thousand dollar coating jobs yeah and for the customer, the value is there in a thousand dollar coating job. It's not as if we just raised our prices. Right, right. There is a there is a value for the customer in the coating. But we've gone roughly in the same amount of labor time. We're doing a lot better. So you have shops. Uh, Ryan uh, Hendricks mm -hmm. uh, yep. just opened a shop this week. Beautiful six thousand square foot yeah. facility. All nice renovated. Shop. Beautiful lighting, flooring, everything. And we see those shops popping up. All the time. Yep. Scotty Shine Shop. Yep. After Just 24 years in business, and he was in, dare I say, a hellhole. I mean, his shop was not the nicest place. Uh, now he's got a, you know, he's his moving own building, into yeah. finally a, a beautiful facility. Yeah. So, owns his own place now. Yeah. Owns his own property now. For exactly. That, which so, is nice. You know, detailing is a business, and if you treat it as such, you can make it uh, a very viable business and very profitable business. Yeah, and and it goes your your, your shop. The yeah. presence that you're building or your mobile rig, any of that stuff, it helps if your vehicles, your business, all that stuff have a level of professionalism. It can then radiate back on you and to your customers. Right. You don't want your customers walking into your shop being filthy. No. I know how it goes. We get into these modes and you just start working and you're trying to get cars done and you walk in and you're like, oh man, one day you realize how beat up the shop is. You want to always make sure that at least your entry area is clean, yeah. that the that when your customers walk in, there's not trash laying out on the ground out front. You know, you guys made a comment, you went and visited a detail shop and you walked you walked up and were like, oh nope, we never mind. Around. Yeah, it was <laughs> yeah. it was that filthy. And yeah. um, you know, and even even the rag company here, our little storefront, we try to make sure it's yeah. it's nice, it's presentable, it's welcoming so that people when they come in they feel like they're buying a quality product because they're in a quality facility. Exactly. You know, if it was just a dark, dingy basement and where the lights are flickering and, yeah. oh, come on in, we'll sell you some towels. Like, they don't want to do that. They don't want to get their car washed by a guy who spray painted his van with his phone number and his <laughs> letters and all that. They're, they're like, I don't know if I want that guy in there. I think a lot of it's about first impressions because exactly. we're, we're talking about the first impression that somebody's going to get of you, it, the, the way that you're dressed and the way that you look, the way that your rig looks. Um, how you answer the telephone when somebody calls. If somebody, if I'm calling to check on something that I'm going to spend fifteen hundred dollars on getting my car polished, and they go, "What's good?" <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm like, "Well, no, not this answer." <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. And also your online persona, not only your business persona, but your personal, because people will go, "Oh well, yeah." They'll, they'll They've got them separate. Your Facebook profile <laughs> for your business, but then they'll click on your personal one. Especially if you're sharing your business, because guys are lazy. They'll do a Facebook post of their car and they'll post it to their Instagram or whatever and it'll post to their personal Facebook yeah. account. And then they'll go, oh, I need to post that on my business. business page. So then they'll post it on their business page without creating a new post. They'll
they'll just share it. Well, now that customer has access to your personal account yeah. and can go on there and see that your profile picture is you with your big, huge bong and you're taking some hits and yeah. that instantly right off the bat. Or they see that you have an opposite political, political affiliation. Yeah. For goodness sake, and religion, it's, politics. Yeah, and it's, leave it yeah, alone. And, oh, you know. You can't be a business owner and be putting that all over No, the place. and I had, you know, opinion, we, we would fly an American flag at our shop and that's that's fine that's it that's all yeah. we needed and i had a i had an employee that during the election had a very large trump sticker on his car and i told him i can't have you parking in front of the building and it's not because of who you're supporting, who you're supporting. i just if if the other guy pulled up and he had a giant hillary sticker on his i mean it was this big and that long and it went the whole length of his windshield if the other guy had it, I had each employee, one with Hillary, one with I'd do the same thing. You guys park around back because I'm not gonna alienate 50% of my clients. I didn't want to alienate yeah. anybody. I don't care about your beliefs. I don't care no, who exactly. you support. I just want to clean your car. Yeah. That's all. No, and you know, being professional, it starts when you get up in the morning and it doesn't end when you go to bed at right. night. It's 24 seven, it's always there. Sleep like a pro too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but where, you know, wherever you go, you go to a restaurant. You don't know that the person sitting behind right. you is your customer or not. Uh, you know, keep your language professional. Keep your yep. especially if you're wearing your labeled your logo oh, gear. Definitely. Um, oh, yeah. Well, those two guys I met on the airplane yesterday. I mean, that could be a several thousand dollar a year swing. <laughs> yeah. You just don't know. Exactly. You know, I tend to like to accelerate with a bit of enthusiasm yeah. when I leave a, a street corner, and <laughs> my wife. Uh, the car I had before had my company name written on the side of it, six feet long and a foot high. Well, when we got the, the newest car, she said, let's be a little more discreet this time. And you know, I understand why she was saying that. Not that I spun the tires or blew anybody off, but I, I just... Yeah, you wanted it, it was a professionalism. I enthusiasm. You didn't want someone associated, oh, there's your logo for your shop, and yeah. that guy really drives like a jerk. Yeah, exactly. And, and, I, I talk to this yeah. guy on the phone a lot while he's driving the car, and I'm, it sounds like you're in a race car. Yeah. <laughs> like, are you at the track or something? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Never it goes right back. I, and I remember, we, I used to work for a gentleman who had a big logo on his back window, and that was, and he had one on his wife's car. Yeah. And we'd be driving, and he would get crazy, but he was, he did it right, but his wife would just cut people off left and right yeah. and do this. And then the I had the shop phone, so the numbers would get called to me, and yeah. I'd be the one chewed out by a driver who was like, ah, "You just cut me off!" And, da, 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 da. and I was, and it's hard to to uh, apologize for that when you're in a shop working on a minivan. And you're like, "I just cut you a what? <laughs> yeah. I just did what? I don't." So, you know, when you own a business, you own a business 24/7. You're always on call. You're always in the public eye. Mm -hmm. You always need to be professional. That, that could be a big determining factor of how successful your business is for the long run also. Um, yeah. You know, if you treat it like a business or if you're treating it like just a hustle where you're trying to get a little bit of money, it's day and night difference. Yeah. yeah. When you're an employee, you work 40 hours a week. Yep. When you're a business owner, you work 24 hours a day. Yep. And, and uh, like you say, like Dan says to that point, your business will grow the more that you treat it as a profession, as a business, as a job, as a real job, because your customers will see that. Your customers will then refer you to their friends and vice versa and vice versa, and it just continues to grow. Well, thanks guys, I appreciate you coming out. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to uh, email me at levi at the ragcompany.com. Make sure you uh, comment down here at the comment section and subscribe. Check out the Optimum Synergy podcast. Dan puts it on every week. Yep. There's every a new Wednesday. episode. Freshy so. every Wednesday. Right. And it's professional. And it is professional. <laughs> and a lot of fun. It's not just aimed at detailers. It's aimed at nope. the car loving public in general. And you can learn a lot from it, which is the, the whole key to this is we're just trying to educate. So thanks guys for coming out. Feel free to watch more episodes right here on the Rag Company YouTube channel.